Hello, lovely one. Let me teach you how to solve this tricky question on geometry. Now we are told a rectangle is inscribed, okay, inscribed in a quarter circle as shown above. Now we are asked to determine the length of X and Y. It's just so easy. Let me teach you what you should know. Now you see that rectangle inscribed is to put in, that means the rectangle is inside as you can see. Okay, and when you talk about a quarter circle, let's take it that this is a complete circle. So a quarter circle is just a circle that is partitioned into four equal parts. The word quarter means four. Okay, so this is your circle. This is your center. You divide this circle into four equal parts. Did you see? So when you divide into four equal parts, one part of it is just a quarter circle. And what do you still observe? Remember, when you have a circle, this center is, this is the center, okay? And the line from the center touching this, this part is what we call the circumference. So the line from the center touching the circumference is what we call the radius. So when you have a quarter circle, if you bring this part out, this is what you have. Did you see it? And it's just the same with what we have in the diagram. So what it means is that this line is the radius and you know radius are the same. So this is also the radius. So it means from here to here gives you the radius and from here to here gives you the radius, which are the same. So how do you answer this? The question says, find the values of X and Y. So if you look at this diagram, you observe that this is the center of the circle, just like what we have here. And the line from the center touching this point is the radius. And also from here to this end is also the radius. So what it means is that if you get the radius, you can easily get your Y and your X. Now, how do you get it? The radius, you know, also, you can also choose to draw a line from here, provided it is from the center touching this circumference. You can draw a line here. Is also radius. You can draw a line. You can also draw. You can draw as many lines as you wish. So when you come to this shape, can we find another radius that can help us to answer this question? Let's see to that. Since you have agreed that from here to here is the radius, we can also make another movement, a line from here. If I move a line to touch this point, is also a radius. If I move a line to touch this point, is a radius, but there is a convenient radius that will help us. And that is the line that moves from here, touching this. So let's clean the inner part so that it makes it clearer for us. So it means if I move a line from here, touching this point, just watch, is also touching the circumference. That means this line is another radius, just like these ones. Okay, so what it means is that if I can get this line, I have gotten the radius and it gives me the answer. So to get that line, remember this is called a rectangle. It means that this has formed angle 90 here because it's a rectangle. So what shape are you seeing? Let's discuss more. So we're going to have, so bringing out this part of the shape, this is what we have. Okay, so this is what we have. From this end to this end, you see it's giving us 12. So here is 12 meters. It has formed the right angle here. And from this end to this end, it says this is a right angle. Opposite sides are the same. So from here to here is 16. Automatically from here to here should also be 16. So it means that this is 16 meters. So what did you observe? This has led you to a type of triangle we call a right triangle. So because it's a right triangle, to find this side which we are looking for, it is the longest side and we call it the hypotenuse. So to find the hypotenuse, which is the same as the radius, what do you do? Use your Pythagorean theory because you use it for each time you have a right triangle and you are interested in the side when you have two given sides. So what do we do? We are going to have using our Pythagorean theorem. So this is going to give us 
we are going to have the hypotenuse side squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the two legs. Okay, so we're going to square this. This is the hypotenuse. So square the two legs and we are having 12 squared add 16 squared. Did you see that? So we have h squared is equal to 12 squared is 12 times 12 to give us 144. And 16 squared is 16 times 16 to give us 256. So we are going to add this. This will give us 10 take 1, 10 take 1. So we have 4. So if you add it, you have h squared is equal to 400. So we're going to now have h. To remove h, you take the square root of both sides, both the positive and negative. So to simplify more, we have. So this will give us, from here, let's take it to this part. So we're going to have h is equal to plus or minus square root of 400 We give us a 20. So we're going to have our edge. What it means here is that edge is equal to 20 and negative 20. But you know, this is on side. We don't need to have the value in negative. So it means that the actual value of edge is 20. And you know, this edge also represents the radius. So the radius is 20 meters. So if the radius is 20 meters, it means from here to here is 20 and from here to here is also 20. So in that case, to get your x, what do you do? So we have 16 add x is equal to 20, okay? So in that case, to get our x, this is addition subtract. So we subtract 16 from both sides and that will give us x is equal to subtract you have four meters so the value of x is four meters then for y we also have it that 12 plus y is equal to 20 so we're going to have to get y subtract 12 from both sides so if you do that we are going to have y if you subtract you have eight meters so the value of x is four and the value of y is it i hope you learned something don't forget to drop your own method i'll be so interested to see how you did this if this helps you give it a thumbs up share with your friends thank you i'll see you in the next class bye, -bye.